And the, one, of the things, one of the things that, when you think about a wall, one of the things that happens when you build a wall is that you trap people inside the United States. So before there was a wall, it, it, right now there's a fence across the border and there's a lot of enforcement across the border. So it's very hard to cross the border. It's expensive. It's difficult. It's a risky, risky proposition. It used to be much easier. When it used to be easier, people used to come into the United States, work here illegally, and then return. Or they used to come for the season and go back. Or they'd come for a few years and go back. But if you build a wall, and, and this has already been shown to be the case by building fences like in San Diego and places like that, then they come and they stay because they can't go back. It's too expensive, too difficult, too risky. So you're actually increasing the number of illegal, so-called illegal immigrants in the United States by building a wall. Now, I don't have to tell you, walls can be tunneled under. Look at what Hezbollah and Hamas have been doing. And you say, oh, well, is the, what's the motivation? The motivation is the amount of money they'll charge the people they're smuggling in. Oh, we can catch the tunnels. Oh, my God, really difficult. Ask the Israelis how difficult it's been to get those tunnels and to find them. Very difficult. And Israel has a much bigger incentive than our border patrol does. Very difficult to do. So you're not going to get the tunnels. They can go, they can, you know, the fence, I can't remember the number, but the, the Border Patrol spends hundreds of millions of dollars on fixing the fences. But Trump wants to build a wall, a 30 to 50 foot wall. So they can't really just cut the fence like they do in normal cases. They'd have to bring ladders and climb over it. How would they get down, somebody once asked. Let me think. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, a rope. How about a rope? They could get down using a rope. Okay, so it slows them down a little bit, true, and then you could also dig tunnels underneath, it slows them down, maybe you'd cut a little bit off of the number of immigrants, maybe they would fight other paths by boat off the coast, we'd have to beef up the Coast Guard. People will come. And this wall, 30 to 50 feet high, how much does it cost? Tens and tens of billions of dollars. I mean, the $5 billion that Trump is asking for now is just for a little section, just for a tiny little section. How long will it cost? How long will it take to build this wall? 20, 30 years. Because it'll have to go through court. The environmentalists will sue over environmental restrictions. Private property owners will sue over eminent domain. States will sue because some of it's state land. There's no way to do this fast and quick and efficient. They will go over the wall, they will go under the wall. They will go around the wall. Right now they're going around because there's 700 miles of wall right now. How, how well has that worked? Chinese tried a wall, right? What, what happened to the Mongols? Did they, they get stopped? So there is no justification for building a wall other than Trump promised it. It's one of the dumbest policies ever invented. Somebody asked, what's the other side of the argument for a wall? There is none. The only other side of the argument is it becomes more expensive to get here. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I like immigrants. I want more people, not less. I want us to fix our legal immigration system so that there is no incentive to be an illegal immigrant. Fix the legal immigration system. Allow more immigrants to come in legally, and you will stop, dramatically stop, dramatically stop the amount of illegal immigrants. Somebody says a, a solid wall hinders prepar preparedness by security forces. This is true, because you can't see what's on the other side. If you build it, they can't come. No, if you build it, they can come. And they will come. And they do come. Walls don't stop motivated people. They don't stop them. It's all about politics. It's all about rhetoric. It's all about emotion. There's no facts around the wall. And there are no facts about the disastrous consequence of illegal immigration. There are no facts about the negative impacts of legal immigration, of any immigration. It's just emotion. It's just scare tactics. People who are scared are easy to control. People who are scared are easy to manipulate. The first thing every authoritarian in all of human history does is scare his people. Because then they can be controlled. There is no security issue 
from illegal immigration. Again, all the data shows that immigrants are less likely, particularly the legal ones, less likely to be criminals than uh, native-born Americans. So those are my views on immigration, right? I think it's great, and I think we should encourage it. I think we should have more of it. And I think to do that, we need to fix our legal system. We need to get rid of illegal immigration by making it legal to immigrate to the United States. There is no issue of immigration. There is no concern of immigration. There's no problem of immigration into the United States. Granted, there was a problem in Europe with Islamic immigration. Other countries might have immigration problems. The United States does not have one. Uh, indeed, illegal immigration into the United States has been in decline since 2007. The number of illegal immigrants today in the U.S. is lower than it was in 2007. Net, illegal immigration is negative. More people leave than come. One other statistic about the wall. 58% of all illegal immigrants in the United States who come illegally, who have come over the last 10 years into the United States, came by over, uh, are illegal because they overstayed their visas, not because they crossed the border. A wall will not protect us from people overstaying their visas. It won't stop people from overstaying their visas. Currently, does the border need better security? Action Jackson asks. I don't think so. I don't see what the threat is. I mean, I'm willing to change my mind if somebody can show me that there's a legitimate Islamic terrorist threat that, uh, that uh, could manifest uh, crossing the border either from Canada or from uh, Mexico. But so far, I haven't seen such a threat. Uh, I haven't seen evidence that such a threat exists. There is Islamic terrorist activity in Latin America, so you have to watch it. And at some point, you might need increased security across the southern border because of that threat. Wouldn't legalizing drugs solve the crime problem? Absolutely. Legalizing drugs is one of the best policies you could have in terms of crime, but also in terms of, uh, you, know, uh, um, you know, the bad elements that are involved in immigration, the, the, the more criminal elements, the, 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 the gang elements that, that come in uh, with the illegal immigrants are motivated to come in because of the drug trade. So if you get rid of the drug trade, absolutely. Uh, crime problem, much of the crime problem is solved. Um, okay, uh, Taylor asks, I work with people on a daily basis around the world and, uh, and my company would come, would move them here as quickly as they could if allowed. They have to lobby every year for visas right now. It's sad, absolutely it's sad. People talk about jobs leaving to China. Why not bring the jobs here? By bringing the people here. The problem is we don't have enough, for example, engineers in the United States. We don't have enough certain types of skilled laborer in the United States. Bring them here. And they would. Companies would do that. And, and what problems would these people create? Name a problem these people would create. And again, don't give them citizenship. They can't get citizenship in their lifetime. Their kids can, but they can't. Fine. Would you allow free flow of Germans into the U.S. after World War II? After World War II, yeah. Yeah, after World War II, I would have. Not during World War II. Once the war is won, yes. Japanese, Germans. And I, I don't think there were many restrictions in Europeans, that many restrictions in Europeans coming to the U.S. after World War II. It was restrictions from everywhere else in the world. Um, after World War II that, that held up. So, again, during a war, you can have all kinds of restrictions on immigrants, but once the war is over, it is over. All right. Uh